Hey guys, today we're going to talk about tips and tricks I uh, wish I knew for repairing watches. First and foremost, uh, when I started, one of the most important things ever is finger cots. These are used on your finger. What they do is they stop any sweat, debris, muck, gunk, whatever is on your fingers from touching the watch. Uh, if you have if you touch the watch with your bare hands, what happens is the sweat and anything that's on there will leave an imprint onto the watch. That is not ideal because it can affect the performance, the running of the watch and numerous other, present numerous other issues. It's also just bad workmanship as well. So when you start, always get a whole lot of finger cuts. They'll come in handy and make life a lot easier. One of the other things I recommend investing in early on as well is pegwood and pegwood's really good for a couple of different reasons. It's good for cleaning out the jewel holes. So what you want to do is you want to sharpen it into a point. So you make three cuts and what I'll do is I'll bring it, bring the knife in, cut that there so you get a nice sharp point sometimes i'll do more than three make four doesn't really matter and then i'll basically just use that pegwood to go through each of the jewels and what that does is that gets rid of any stubborn oil and i'll always flip it over and do both sides for example this is just a uh, scrap a uh, plate I grabbed off from my drawer for an Amiga 565 that I'm just using today as an example. Um, Pegwood's also really good as well. So say for example you have a, a bridge that you're trying to get on and you want to put a little bit of pressure down to get it on. Now it's sitting on top but it's not located. I could use my tweezers and push down, but there's a good chance that they'll leave a mark. So it's often advisable to use either pegwood or alternatively, if you want to, you can purchase uh, some nylon sticks. These are a really stiff plastic and they're really good to use push bridges on to and they won't leave any marks. That, that pegwood uh, is really handy and what I'll do is I'll continually sharpen and, and just make sure those jewels are as clean as possible. What that does is it gives the solution just, you know, as best a chance as possible just to make sure everything's clean and the amplitude's really good. So that's another essential tool that will save you a lot of time. Next thing uh, that you always want to make sure is in good condition is your tweezers. Now, Getting a good set of tweezers is really important. I have a set of uh, DeMont uh, tweezers and I have basically all the sizes. So I've got four, five brass and then numerous other hair screen tweezers. I got it as a set back in the day when I was apprentice, but the majority of the time I just use the uh, the brass, the fours, and the fives, and that's really about it. So your tweezers, you want to have each of these edges right here, these two edges, they have to be flat and matching. The, the inside inside edge here also has to be flat so you want a really nice sharp corner on each each side so you don't want any rounded corners so that when you grab something it's completely flat so at the tip here mine's completely flat and joins up nicely so I'll just go quickly through how to sharpen those and um, there's a couple of different ways to do it but it's pretty simple just to give you an idea, this is how I do it. So I have a uh, sharpening stone and what I'll do 
So I'll bring the tweezers onto the edge, like so, and get them flat on both sides. Now I'm only going up to about, about there, and I'll try and draw it back and forth. What that will do is that'll flatten off any nicks and burrs that are on this outside edge. So I go like this. And I'll flip it over to the other side. And then I as well inspect them. And so the outside edge is pretty good there. They're nice and flat. Now I want to do the inside edge on this. So that edge right there, that one right there, because what there is, there's a couple of nicks and scratches and crap. And what that'll do is that'll leave a couple of chips and marks on that nice edge. And that can then affect how we pick up and handle parts. So what I do, and there's a couple of different tools uh, you can use, but I use these uh, diamond home easy files, um, or you can just get like another disc as well. Um, which is handy. The advantage of why you want to use this is because I can put, I can open the tweezers up. So why I use these ones, sorry, is because I can open the tweezers up because it's so skinny and I can run it so it's nice and flat and I run it along there and I go back and forth like so. Now you don't want to go side to side like that because otherwise you're going to get you're going to get rounding and tilting so you want to go front and side and try and keep it as flat as possible and then i want to check to make sure that at the nice and flat and parallel and i use a dirty piece of rodico Clean it off and inspect it. It looks pretty good. Nice and flat. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the end of the tweezers, where they touch, is nice and flat so that when you come down and pick up something, you're not, it's not like rounded and you're gonna rock. So I put it nice and flat. So, bring it together. I just do this by hand. Check. Just use some old Rodico. Now, doing that though is going to leave a bit of a burr. So what I do is I just, I'll drag, I'll drag back once, just a little bit, drag back again. I'll do it on the ends as well, and on the ends. And then I'll also just very lightly with a super fine, just flatten it, drag, flatten it, drag. And by that point, everything should be nice and flat and even. And so when you go to pick up a screw, it should feel a lot nice and easier to do probably the most underestimated uh, thing that can be really fixed up and it'll make a really big improvement is having sharp screwdrivers so having sharp screwdrivers clean screwdrivers having the screwdriver fit the slot correctly so for example so what we want to do I've got my sharp tweezers now and we're going to put the screw in into the slot from there we want to select the right screwdriver so there's a couple of different factors at play the screw width should not be further than the screw slot so if it's longer than the screw slot you are going to burr the bridge up and cause some problems so one one way to do is to double check is to put it in and you always want to do a bit of a test fit now what you also want to do 
is you want the screw slot, the screw to go all the way or almost all the way to the bottom of the screw slot. Then you also want it to sit in there and you don't want it to be able to wiggle side to side. So you don't want any, any play from side to side. You want it to sit in there nice and firm and that's it. Having it sit in the screw slot nice and firm will reduce uh, any burring and damage or slipping. So this doesn't sit in there correctly. It's not skinny enough. Uh, Amiga screw heads are notorious for being very thin. So what I do is I set my, my tool up and now I've got to get the first bit is to get it nice and flat on the side. And I always do a couple of test test movements just to see where it's cutting and we're good. We're cutting, it's nice and flat and it's getting there. Right, and then I'm going back to my, my screw head. Now, I'm going to have to adjust this screw slot again. So what I'll do is I'll put it in. I know it's too loose. I'm just going to put it down so that's in. And currently, it's wiggling side to side. So that wiggle, just that little bit of wiggle there, is too much. So, I want to sit on this, hold my my pointer on the top and then I support it between my, th my thumb and the bird, the middle finger. And what I do is I move it back and forth. And what I'll do is I'll grab the movement and I'll double check. And I have actually gotten that first screen knife. There's no fly. That's good. Okay, you want to make sure that when you're flattening off is that you get the top of the screw head nice and flat as well. So you don't want the screw sitting on an angle. You don't want it off to one side like this. You want it nice and flat and even. So that takes a little bit of getting used to and a little bit of mucking around on the on the stone these tools this tool here is imperative got to have it doing it by hand or any other way is just inefficient slow and it doesn't produce reliable results having your screwdrivers to the right thickness having them flat having them nice and clean with no burrs, no marks, no chips will make for cleaner work and will vastly improve the quality of your work. And it just reduces mistakes. It's it's one of those simple things that like it takes, you know, five, ten minutes to, you know, sharpen a screwdriver, but the effect, uh, you know, you can't put a price on that. Like you're just reducing the risk of error. There's nothing worse than seeing screws that are all burred up and damaged and scratched just because someone hasn't taken a little bit of extra time to to put in the effort. Um, another important thing to get, and probably uh, this 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 makes a significant difference as well, and it's pretty simple. And it's Rodico. So. Basically, Rodico is really good in the dismantling process. Uh, in the assembly process, most brands actually don't want you to use Rodico because it does leave a little bit of a residue behind. So Rodico is really good for getting rid of like any, any marks and fingerprints, any oil on jewels. And what I do is I'll always like wipe it over and just give it a good wipe everywhere. So after I've pegged wood, I'll use pegwood and then I'll use rodico. And that just gets rid of all that stuff that's on there. Now, you'll notice that 
the Rodico can get pretty funky and go a different color. That's a sign that it is it needs to be replaced. Rodico comes in these nice little slips. Uh, that's the reference number if anyone wants to get any. It's Bergeon 6033. Now, you can see it's a very light color when it's clean, and then it progressively gets darker. When it gets to this point, like, it's no good for cleaning purposes. Like, I literally just use it to, like, just quickly wipe down my desk, and then I'll use a cleaning solution after that to wipe the desk down. Additionally, if you have any parts that are stuck, so, for example, the crown wheel is a common one that gets quite stuck. So what happens is the oil under there sticks the crown wheel core to the barrel bridge and you can't get it up and you sometimes you try to get tweezers under, you can't get it up. So all you have to do is use your rodico, put it on and then bang, more often than not it comes off. And the other culprit as well is the washer, which I've just removed and that one also stays on there. Once again, like this is why rodico is really good and then you can just come in and get rid of all that excess oil and then you just take off the screws and the bridge. That's what makes Rodico really versatile. It's ability to reduce the risk of causing damage. It's not so that handy for cleaning, but it's really handy in dismantling and being really careful with parts. There's a there's five tips for you on uh, you know just just how best to just improve your watchmaking game, make it a little bit easier simpler and just make some slight improvements hope you guys enjoy it thank you